Okay, so in the third round of the FA Cup replay tonight, Leeds United were playing Cardiff City at home at Ellen Road. This is the first time Leeds have had an FA Cup match at Ellen Road since 2016. Leeds don't do boring games. They don't do scrappy 1-0s. They, they, they do high-scoring games. Uh, seven goals on the night. They average five goals a game um, at Ellen Road this season. Uh, seven have gone in tonight, so that's above average. Leeds do another something else uh, a lot defend badly um, and, and tonight they were brilliant for 84 minutes and then they give away two sloppy goals uh, which is going to be frustrating because they were going for a clean sheet which would have been Jesse March's uh, biggest win as manager of Leeds so uh, that's a bit frustrating but on the goal scoring front they've just put five past an absolutely hopeless Cardiff side there is a reason why Cardiff are the lowest scorers in the championship and they're on a third manager for the season where to begin? Uh, Wilfred um, Nonto has scored two fantastic goals. I don't know which one's better. The the um, Paolo Di Canio impersonation for the first one with the outside of the right foot on the scissor volley or the counter-attack goal for the third goal of the night in his second. Pick, Take your pick. Uh, Rodrigo scores a goal in between those two. Leeds could have had 10 before half-time. This, the game was ridiculous. From the very first whistle, Leeds were 100 miles an hour. Which is one of the interesting things about Leeds. They, they don't do, you know, uh, structure. They do chaos. Entertaining chaos, but they do chaos. His first, Nonto's first goal is, after just 30 seconds of play, it is a fantastic, fantastic finish. But the build-up play is brilliant as well. But that finish, I mean, he should be hitting that with his left foot. He hits on the outside of his right. The goalkeeper should be saving that as well. Um, but... The technique on that finish. Paolo Di Canio for West Ham against Wimbledon back in the late 90s. Just, that's all I'm going to say on that one. What is it with Italian players and scissor volleys? Fantastic. That's after 30 seconds. How they didn't score until the 34th minute is beyond me because they had chance after chance after chance. Nonto could have had five tonight. Should have definitely had a hat-trick. Um, Rodrigo. Gets his goal in 34 minutes. That is fantastic. Um, again, it's 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 not only the passing moves to get up the field. It's the the presence of mind to go around the keeper, embarrass the goalkeeper, Jack Anik, embarrass the defenders, and then finish. And that's with a heavy touch. Imagine if he actually did that perfectly. That would have been an even better goal. And then uh, Wilfred Nonto with his second goal, but two minutes later, uh, barely a breath. And um, I don't know which one's better out of his two, if I'm being honest. Now, they get lucky with the VAR. And this is where I, I, I've had a problem with VAR in the FA Cup this season. In fact, any, every season it's been introduced from the third round onwards. The first match against Cardiff, um, which was a two-all draw, two draw, Cardiff's goal by Nelson, the centre-back, would stand. Now, I understand why it's been given as offside. I think that is a, a, a we've got precedent there within the World Cup and with VAR this season, not just in England, but across Europe. So I understand why it's been given offside and it is a correct decision if we're going by precedent, which has been set. But if that's at Cardiff, that goal stands. And that while Cardiff didn't look like winning the game, that is the frustration. Now, without VAR at the championship grounds, the League One grounds, the League Two grounds, it benefits the football league sides at the Premier League grounds, the use of VAR benefits obviously the Premier League sides because that's the systems that both you know the football league and the Premier League are used to when they're at home. The fact the competition can have cherry pick only the Premier League grounds and Wembley, the semi finals and the final for VAR use, but the Championship League One and League Two clubs do not benefit from it, it's a head scratcher. But Yes, Leeds get lucky with the disallowed goal in 43 minutes, but they're 3-0 up. But Leeds do this. They blow leads. They concede sloppy goals, and that was a very sloppy bit of defending. But that's the only real fight Cardiff showed in the first half. It doesn't get much better after half-time. Um, it's good to see Patrick Bamford back playing. Um, I'm not a Leeds fan. Uh, and those who've been subscribed to the channel long enough now are a Blackburn fan, so I have problems. But Patrick Bamford playing again... Um, that is a really good sign. He's had a lot of injuries, which is uh, frustrating. He's got injured at the wrong time, so he missed the Euros, which is a big shame because he was 
in contention to challenge like Harry Kane and Sterling for uh, a striking position. He scores two goals in five minutes. Again, I don't know which one's better, the first or the second. Um, but it's great to see Patrick Bamford back play. Um, so he gets two goals in five minutes. And it's 5-0. It could be 10. It could be 12-0. That's how bad Cardiff were. They were. A sieve would be more, you know, resistant to leaking than Cardiff's defence. The fact they put Sang, who is a, a central midfielder at right back, is, well, that just sums up Cardiff's problems, really, this season. Uh, injuries, lack of goal scoring, and they're on their third manager, so there you go. Um, however, Luke Ayling uh, had a bit of a shocker defensively, and that gives uh, Callum Robinson his first goal. Um, I don't know what Pat, uh, Luke Ayling's doing. Um, yes, he's he's had limited game time this season. He's also been injured and he's come back in. Um, but he comes on as a second half substitute. But I don't know what Luke Hayling's doing there. Either just kick it out and defend the corner or kick it out for the throw. I don't know what he's doing there. Uh, he's tried to control it with his thigh. It's gone through him. And Callum Robinson will not have an easier goal all season. And he's their top goal scorer with five. Well, now six on the night, but that sums up Cardiff's problem that the top goal scorer has got single digits at this stage of the season. Um, Rockers handball, again, VAR. Um, in the first game, that's not given because the referee has not seen the incident. It's play on. VAR's coming, got it right. I think VAR's got both decisions right. But in the first game, Cardiff don't get a penalty. Now, Callum Robertson steps up with the last kick of the game, pretty much, and, and slots home his second. And that's hard in added time, right at the end of the game. But Cardiff City should not have had those two goals. That sloppiness from Leeds and with a with a commanding lead. Now, I mean, on another night, Cardiff only get the one goal because the disallowed goal. Tonight, with VAR, they get two. So the debate about VAR and should the FA, you know, bring VAR in from the first round of the FA Cup all the way through and, and help pay for the costs for the, the lower league sides will rage on. The debate about is it getting decisions right or wrong will rage on. We know there's going to be making some further changes to VAR going forward where fans will actually understand why the, a decision is being made. Um, so it's still a very imperfect system. Um, you know, the fact that the referees missed both the offside goal and the handball and has allowed play to go on. If that's at Cardiff, which was the two all draw, those, you know, the penalty is not given and the first goal stands. So the outcome of the, day, the game, as in the final result and the scoreline, would have been different. So there's that debate. But Leeds could have had double figures here. Cardiff were that bad. They get lucky with their two goals. But Leeds give sides that and if that's a better side they're playing against yes Leeds going forward fa fantastic defensively they've well in theory could have had could have been a 5-3 Leeds do not do boring games but there we go so next weekend the fourth round comes along and we've got some real cracking ties to look forward to in the fourth round which is fantastic. But for me, thank you very much for watching. Place your thoughts in the comment section below. And yes, I know this is the first video since I've had my hair cut. It's weird. We're used to the long mullet, um, which was shoulder length. It's cold in my flat. Um, I am missing my hair and my beard. It, it's a very strange experience, but um, we'll have to get used to the new look because my hair's going to be short for a while. But anyway, thank you very much from me. Thank you to all the new subscribers as well. I really appreciate that. And the next goal is obviously to reach the few hours and all that crap to get monetized. But there we go. We're, we're on a good trend of trajectory with the channel. And for me, thank you very much for watching. And I'll have some more content for you very, very soon.